Bruce Lee lied to you. Blasphema! Welcome to Laptop Dojo, where the strikes come from the fist, not from copyright bots. I'm Shifu Payne, and last time we took a look at the Jian Sword, its attributes, history, and how it's fallen out of fashion over time. Well, this week we're looking at a weapon which is probably one of the most infamous when it comes to martial arts, as we take a look at the nunchucks. Mostly, they've gone into their reputation as a result of their being used by Bruce Lee. Not to mention the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as Michelangelo, which could arguably be most people's introduction to the weapon. Nunchucks are generally regarded as these powerful, effective, almost mystical weapons that require great potency and great skill to wield. Well, here I am to play devil's advocate and tell you, quite frankly, Bruce Lee lied to you. Blasphema! Now, as far as the history of the weapon goes, it's not as cut and dry as, say, the Dian. More relegated to legend than anything else, the most popular story goes back to the 1400s with King Shohashi of Okinawa, Japan, who, after uniting the provinces of Okinawa into Ryukyu, banned the use of most weapons to prevent a revolt. You know, it's a general thought, but it might have been easier just to not do anything to piss off the general population of Okinawa. It's just a thought. As while the lower classes could not use weapons, the higher classes could. But a sharp reduction of wages in the 1700s meant many had to go into manual labor, meaning many weapons were confiscated. Now, without any means of defense, save a couple of sticks, fists, and chewing gum, except no chewing gum, the newly made farmers had to cobble together weapons using ordinary existing objects. So, what do you get if you cross a road with two sticks? Well then, you get a pretty great evening, but apart from that... That is the most commonly held belief when it comes to the nunchucks, that they were formed out of gardening tools. So here's our question for today. Are the nunchucks as effective as they are purported to be? Well, no. No, they are an awful garbage weapon. Okay, they don't work in combat, they don't work in sparring, they are terrible. So the most common reason as to why people say that the nunchucks are effective is due to centripetal force, right? With the idea being that as the nunchuck swings around at the most, at the furthest point here, the most amount of force is generated, and so when it hits them, when it hits someone, it's much more painful, right? But the thing is that that same thing is very true of a sword, a simple stick, or just any weapon in general, really, with any sort of length. So why then is this? more effective than a sword. Well, in short, if you apply a basic amount of physics to the existence of nunchucks, you actually find they're pieces of junk. Sure. Zentripetal force plays a role, but it's held back from dealing more force by the key design factor, separation via the rope or chain in the middle. You see, when an object strikes a surface, while force does go into the surface, some ricochets back into the object. Take a ball as an example. When the ball hits the ground, instead of the ball stopping completely, it rebounds and bounces back up. The same is true of nunchucks. When they strike a surface, they rebound and ricochet back, most likely hitting you in the process, which differs from, say, a sword, as the sword has a greater surface area, is a complete object with no breaks, and so while force rebounds, it has the space to disperse. So if nunchucks are as terrible as I'm saying they are, if they do not work in the levels of sparring or combat, why am I teaching them to you? Why am I teaching you a form about them? Why are we making a video on them? Well, put simply, despite the fact that they don't work in sparring or in combat, in terms of form work, and just in terms of having fun, they still are very effective. See, with the nunchucks, they're very much like a modern job interview. It's all about the transferable skills. So with the, so with the nunchucks, we learn about control, discipline, and momentum. I could go on all day. Let's actually get some action here and take a look at a form for the nunchucks. We're going to start in attention by having the nunchuck between our hands and feet shoulder width apart. Splitting the nunchucks out straight, we're going to step into forward bow stance to the left and swing the nunchucks out to the left. Then step to the right, still in forward bow, and strike by swinging the nunchuck forward and catching the nunchuck under the armpits, making a complete turn. Roundhouse kick with the dominant leg and transition into a butterfly kick. Forward bow and strike. Step back into attention and swing the nunchuck back to have it rest on the shoulder, catching the loose half of the other hand doing this to change hands. Into forward bow and strike forwards twice. 
We're then going to change hands a total of four times and then swing the nunchuck around the hip to change hands again. We're then going to chamber the nunchuck behind the arm like when we change hands and then strike, repeating this four times and finally chamber the nunchuck. Side kick left and side kick right and jump into a pop 180. Crouching down into two tail kicks, returning to attention, strike up and step out into forward bow and swing to the left and then the right. Finally, we're going to go into a roundhouse kick with our dominant leg and finish at attention. And that is where we will leave it today. Next time, we'll be going back to the animal forms and bringing together what we've already learned to take a look at the dragon form. But until then, thank you all for watching and until next time, Peace be with you.